A reading from the book of Proverbs. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband, entrusting his heart to her, has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and works with loving hands. She puts her hands to the distaff and her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. Charm is deceptive and beauty fleeting. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. The word of the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. Blessed who fear the Lord, who walk in His ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handwork. Bless you, be and favored. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the precess of your home. Your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Concerning times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you have no need for anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When people are saying, peace and security, then sudden disaster comes upon them, like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. For you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, for that day to overtake you like a thief. For all of you are children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as the rest do, but let us stay alert and sober. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Lord 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward, bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not then have put my money in the bank so that I could have it so I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. But here in the Sunday's Gospel, we have that beautiful parable of the talents. And the one that we hear every year um, here around uh, this time. And this one that we're also familiar with. But in this, there's that line early on. One of my favorite lines here in the parable. Uh, but it's one of those part, part early on. And so kind of gloss over it quickly as we try to get to the meat. Uh, the real meat of the parable. But here, my favorite line, it is. He entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five, to another two, to a third one. Eat to each according to his ability. That here the master knows, this acknowledgement that the master knows the strength of that first servant, but also that weakness of the third. That he knows his servants and he still calls them. He still calls each of them. Even the third, in his weakness, the master calls him, gives him this great gift, this great talent, this great wondrous um, gift to indeed, to call even him. That generosity of the master giving even uh, yeah, to, to the weakest of them. Because indeed, that uh, if the master knew the ability of each, then why did he not simply give all of them to the first, uh, the first servant and make the most money? Because the master is generous and loves his servants. And calls here, even the third servant, calls him, even him in his weakness. And so here we have that response of that third servant. Here, after this time, after being left instead, this, this third servant, 
Here in this call, this great call through this gift, he instead responds in fear in jealousy, and hiding that treasure away, hiding that gift away, stashing it away. And this kind of odd thing that uh, the master calls out there in the parable is always something that stuck with me, always very much um, rubbed me the wrong way. I mean, indeed. Truly, as the third servant says, he turns to his master and uh, more or less calls him a thief, saying, you harvest where you do not plant. The master says, well, then why, if you, knew, if you thought this, then why did you simply hide it away and give what I gave? Why did you not do more if you knew that I desired more? And indeed, that truly, it always was like, yeah, why, why did that third servant not do more? Why did he not, indeed, put it in the bank, make interest? Why not he even do that? here, here in that mind of the third servant, the only way in which one could think that hiding this away um, and in fear of that master who would come and to take, is here this gift that has been given to this third servant, no longer seen as this gift, no longer seen as this beautiful call, but instead seen as that possession of mine. This gift of the master, this master's wealth, became the servant's possession. It was mine. I need to protect it. I need to hide it. Even from that giver of this great gift, this possessive jealousy around this gift, to take the, this wonderful gift and it's to ignore the even more wonderful giver. And that we too, here in our lives, so very often as well, here in our gifts that our Lord has given to us, those wonderful gifts of indeed our abilities and our talents, but also in our gifts of home, of, of work, of family, of friends, of health, even of those little daily blessings. So very often it is that we pull in to ourselves, hide in, become jealous of our gifts, desiring them only to remain here with me, even to the point of looking outward and becoming envious of the gifts of the others, envious of what others have. We're all too often simply taking for granted those tremendous gifts of indeed, those gifts, uh, those fundamental gifts of life, of being indeed here called by our Lord, given that talent to go forth and to follow after him, the great gifts that our Lord has given to us, whether it is indeed we become, uh, indeed, um, take, take them, taking them for granted, become jealous of them or even envious of others, so very often it is we follow after that third servant in that uh, path of hiding away, of tucking away that which, this gift that now belongs to me and only me. But so very beautiful it is that here, if the master knows his servants so well, knows their ability, how much more does our Lord know us? How much more than does our God know us, know our strengths and know our weaknesses, our littlenesses, our struggles? Our, uh, our tendencies to take things for granted, our tendencies to want to pull in our, ten our struggles with uh, different aspects of the Christian life, our struggles even in faith, our struggles even to trust in him, to know his love. The beauty is that our Lord knows. Our Lord knows us, he knows our strength, he knows our weakness, and he still calls us. He still gives us this tremendous gift of life, these gifts that we have here throughout our own lives, our, and our families, our friends, our homes. He gives us these beautiful gifts and calls us through them. Because it is that tremendous uh, reality that always a gift of our Lord is never simply uh, just a gift, just a, a point in, in a moment, but is instead always that deeper call. That call, uh, that in the gift of the Lord is always that call to go and to love, to go and to share, to go and to give. That always, even when it comes to that fundamental gift of life, there is that call to love, to go and to love here with this life that we have been given. That gift of our faith to go, to love, to give, to share, and to build up those who are struggle. Here, in our gifts, this beautiful call we have been given to follow after him, here even in our weakness, our Lord calls us. So very beautiful it is. And so, my brothers and sisters, here today, let us come here to the altar of our Lord, drawing here, uh, here uh, to him, 
giving thanks not only for indeed these gifts that we have been given, but giving thanks for that tremendous gift of himself that we will receive here in the Eucharist here today. The gift of himself that he gives us so that we might then go forth and to bring him there into the world here today. And let us begin here today, my brothers and sisters, that building up, that going forth to multiply these gifts that we have been given by sharing them with those around us. That especially here in this time of pandemic, where indeed so much of everything is uh, pulling us into ourselves, pulling us into isolation, pulling us away from those around us. It is so very important then at this time to reach out to know the, the struggle of others, to know our own struggles, and to reach out asking for that help when we need it, as well as asking if there is ways in which we can help others to share these gifts that we have been given, to build up those who are lonely, for those who are afraid, for those who are homebound, for those who are struggling to find work, to build them up as brothers and sisters here at this time, but especially as it is that we move here into these seasons of Thanksgiving and Christmas, of these colder months, these harder months, that here, where indeed, with this time where we celebrate these wonderful gifts that we have been given, there will be so many here among us, but as well as so many there around us who will be struggling, struggling to see even the beauty of the gifts that they have been given, struggling with sadness, with depression, with anxiety, with loneliness, with isolation, and so here, as we move into these difficult months ahead, let us indeed reach out, let us indeed share these most beautiful gifts that we have been given. Even if it is that only gift that we are able to share here today is that gift of life, then let us use this life to reach out and to touch those around us. To reach out, if it only be simply by a phone call or an email. To reach out to those that we know through those that we know who will be struggling during this time, but also to those who may seem like they have everything together. Because we know not, indeed, the struggles of others. It is our Lord who knows. And it is our Lord who has called us here into this time, into this place, to go and to share these wonderful gifts that we have been given, so that indeed, we might build up this kingdom, and we might multiply these gifts, and then we might then hear that beautiful response of our Lord. Well done. My good and faithful servant, come and share your master's joy. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Spirit, was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He was again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one and holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we come before you now in faith, 
sharing our needs and concerns. For the church, that we may be aware of the gifts of faith, time, and opportunity that God has entrusted to us, be good stewards of these gifts and diligently utilize them in the service of God and our neighbor, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the bishops of the United States, that God will give wisdom and insight to the bishops as they meet this week and address the challenges facing the church today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing, that our nation may turn from adversarial conflicts and allow God to show us ways to work together to promote the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are seeking employment, that God will lead them to opportunities to use their gifts and talents in life-giving and productive ways, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering, immigrants, those recovering from natural disasters, and those who are grieving, that God will bring light and strength to their spirits, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially Chris Hernandez, Lisa Scoby, Justin Garcia, and those in our Book of Remembrance, that God will welcome them into the light and joy of his presence forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, look with favor on your servants as we strive to do your will, using the gifts you have given us. Hear our needs that we have brought before you and guide us in your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the prize of everlasting happiness. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. 
Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. All you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. In memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, 
whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. May the name of the mighty Lord and his spirit left us received. May the sins of the world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen.
Rebel the world, a world of hunger, wine for all peoples, people who thirst. May we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink pour out your love. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life, broken to reach and heal the wounds of human pain. Where we divide your people in your waiting there, on bended knee to wash your feet and endless care. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, wine for all peoples, people who thirst. May we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink pour out your love. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the wine of peace. Poured into hearts once broken and where dryness sleeps. Where we are tired and weary, you are waiting there to be the way which beckons us beyond despair. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, wine for all peoples, People who thirst, may we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink pour out your love. Lord Jesus Christ, you called us to your feast, at which the rich and powerful have become the least. Where we survived on others in our human greed, you are among us, backing for your every need. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, wine for all peoples, people who thirst. May we who eat. Be bread for others. May we who drink pour out our For those 
those who loved him. Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus. Teach us the wisdom of God. Our lives are but a single breath. We flower and we fade, yet all our days are in your hands. So we return in love what love has made. I have not seen, here has not heard what God has ready for those who loved him. Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus. Teach us the wisdom of Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, so that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Just a couple of announcements uh, before we go. Uh, firstly, as a reminder, uh, next weekend, uh, to be sure to pick up our Advent and Christmas uh, bundles, which will include uh, music by The Vigil Project, reflections by Father Dave Bavanka, and a devotional uh, companion booklet as a gift from the, the parish uh, to your family during the season. And for those who are joining us uh, via the live stream, uh, that we'll be having, uh, again, the, the right uh, for the distribution of Holy Communion outside of Mass in our north parking lot at 1015 to please um, come join us for this prayer service and the Eucharist. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. See not thy Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of days. Come and then all nations, see all your God's goodness, melody of praise and thanks to God. Bring out the Lord's glory, praise Him with your music, worship Him and bless His name. Power has wedded, honor is His garment, risen from the snares of death. Has spoken, one bread he has broken, new life now he gives to all. Come in on all your nations, sing all your Lord's goodness, melodies of praise and thanks to God. Read out the Lord's glory, praise him with your music, worship him and bless his name. Permission to broadcast, stream the music in this service obtained from onelicense.net.